Welcome to Bigfoot Club, the fifth episode. I am your host, Robert Jesse Dominguez, and with me is... Back on the mic tonight, November 3rd, Chris. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, sorry. (laughs) And also... It's Ash. Ash. Just Ash. No, no. Not just Ash. Yeah. Well, sometimes. I like a little (laughs) mystery. You never know. How, how you guys? It's Ash. Wow, that was. No, I, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> how you? How you guys doing right now? Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Ash. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Happy. Happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Um. Just wanted to. I guess we can go to into our first. Our first topic here, Bigfoot. We're starting like, no. Hit the ground running. No, uh, <laughs> no, no. How? No, uh, uh, JT stuff or nothing. Well, so. right. Oh, we're right. just. I was like, we're not gonna hear the how. We no, no, we, how. We, no, we are. No, but, no, no. but I just, I don't want to do any. Oh, you're not gonna do any shout out. You just right shouted out to Justin Timberlake by saying you're not gonna shout out to Justin <laughs> That's Timberlake. Not, no shout out. The opposite. <laughs> Fuck you, Justin. Are you are you trying some reverse psychology there or something? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, feeling sorry. I'm feeling the development of a of a theme here. <laughs> uh, I guess it was a reverse effect there. So, okay, you're shouting out by not shouting out. Yeah, I got you. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our first subject. Bigfoot. So creepy. <laughs> So, <clears throat> I wanted to start the show off with, what do you guys think of the word Sasquatch when someone brings it to you or your attention? <laughs> John C. Riley. <laughs> John C. Riley. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And tenacious D. <laughs> Is that it? Just John, I, just John I mean, C. Riley, that's it? What, what comes to my mind immediately is that, yes. You know. <laughs> but if someone <laughs> if someone comes to you and says, hey, you're, you're into Sasquatch. You're so, okay. I, Normally, I'm just like, please don't tell me a story so I can tell you that it's like a raccoon. I really don't know. <laughs> I'm going to hurt your feelings. Chris? I, I think of Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah. yeah. That's what I think of. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I think of a big hairy monster, uh, a Sasquatch. I mean, I think it's a, it's a pretty fitting name for a big hairy monster, Sasquatch. Yeah. I, I think of commercial stuff. That's what I think whenever someone says Sasquatch or that's, that's just me. I, I just think of marketing and, um, Billboards, stuff like that. That's what I think of. So, you think people trying to get money? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And, um, well, it worked because when I think of Sasquatch, I think of a movie. Yeah, yeah. That's just it. Just came came to my mind as just as a movie or marketing or anything or stuff like that. That's just me. But <clears throat> the word Sasquatch, where did it come from, Chris? It came from. Sasquatch is said to be a large ape-like creature that lives primarily in the forest stretching from the west coast of British Columbia to northern California and to a lesser extent throughout North America. And this is from uh, the Canadian Encyclopedia. So the origin of the word, the word Sasquatch is believed to be an anglization of the Salish word Sasquatch, and that's spelled S A S Q. Apostrophe ETS, meaning wild man or hairy man. Uh, J.W. Burns coined the term in the 1930s. Burns was an Indian agent assigned to the Chihalis Band, now known as the Sestalis, 
um, First Nation, uh, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that. The Sestali's people claim a close bond with Sasquets and believe uh, it has the ability to move between the physical and spiritual realm. Sasquatch has also been commonly known as Bigfoot in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. So it's a region of North America that's by the... I think it says on here Selish, but I think it's Coast Selish. Coast Selish. Yeah, it yeah. just says it just says Selish. S A L I S H. <clears throat> but the the territory is uh, west coast of British Columbia to Northern California. That's where. Uh, yeah, that's where it originated. Well. I know you guys don't think that much about it, but I know it, to me it, it's. And if anybody that knows me, especially from, um, I'm on a, a Facebook group, uh, the Real Bigfoot Community, and um, it's run by I believe David Hall, and <clears throat> he does a great job, by the way. Um, shout out to him. Um, Push. <laughs> so. Um, you know, to me, it's it's one of those things that, that people use that word too much, Sasquatch. It's like, and I know we were talking off show about this, about, it's like calling them all baseball fans, Yankee fans, and they're not, you know, because um, the word Sasquatch, it's it's tied into a region. So there's there's tons of Bigfoot researchers across the state that, that, that coined the phrase Sasquatch, and it kind of bugs me. A little bit. So, you guys have have any thoughts on that? But what what is what does it bug you? It's like, well, Ash, you, you have an opinion before Ash? No, I don't. Uh, okay. It, it it bugs me because there's like, say for example, there's groups in Illinois, and they go, "Hey, I'm I'm Bob. I'm with the Illinois Sasquatch Society." And so, to me, that tells me everything I need to know about that research group, that researcher, because he, he doesn't bother to find out what Native American in his state calls a Bigfoot, because it could be yeah. different. It's different. Every tribe has a different name for them. So, whenever someone just says, yeah, let's just use the word Sasquatch, you know, in our name, it's just like, it tells me that they're, number one, they're lazy, and they're cowards, because that's... They don't care to learn. They don't care. They don't care to go out the extra mile to research the area. So that's just me. So, so I, I I get the lazy part. I can I can I can saddle or piggyback on the lazy part. Um, but the coward part. What what makes it cowardly to use the word Sasquatch? Well, I got it from Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson says, you know. <laughs> Your buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy Johnson says, you know, in the fourth quarter, um, whenever you're tired, you're a coward. And so if you're tired of researching and you don't want to research, then you're a coward. Okay. So does that make sense? Kind of. <laughs> kind of. I don't think being tired makes you a coward. Um, I think I think being tired makes you tired. Well, as far as football goes. Well, but yeah. I can see it more on. The research on side. the research side. So I didn't, I, I didn't know Jimmy Johnson said that. Yeah, to me that doesn't make any sense because if you're tired, you're tired. Well, he he his thing was always um, of being in shape. Mm -hmm. You know, his guys he weren't he wasn't gonna. I think in the early years of Miami and Oklahoma State, he he didn't have the best athletes, but he said he would have the most conditioned athletes. Mm -hmm. So so he ran him all the time. So his guys outran everybody else. Yeah. So. And the same thing to me goes for Bigfoot, so. Yeah. So, you're saying that the people pretty much use uh, Sasquatch as a scapegoat to just bring people in to what they're doing. Yeah, I think, I think it's like, um, you know how you hear stories about a company that just pulls up and they don't buy furniture to use like, you know, fold out tables and fold out chairs. And, and it's like a, you know, like a telemarketing call center or something like mm -hmm. that. They just build up and go. 
and they just hire people, and then when they're ready to go, they just break down and go. Mm-hmm. So I, I look at the same way with uh, Bigfoot groups that use the word Sasquatch, and it, maybe it's a little harsh, but it's just how I am because I think if anybody knows me from the real Bigfoot community on Facebook, I'm I'm always posting stuff like that. Someone someone will join and they'll post something. Hey, I have a new Sasquatch documentary in Indiana. Check it out. And I, you know, I go. I didn't, I didn't know Indiana was in <laughs> British Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll post that. That's what I, I'll kind of post that. And say, I go, sweet. You're talking about British Columbia too? Oh, awesome. You know, and and they get upset and they send something nasty to me, and I just, yeah. I just tell them grow some armadillo skin. So, so when you when you started on your on your Bigfoot journey. Were you, did you feel the same way at the beginning of your journey as you do now? Or what, when, when was this lazy coward using Sasquatch Bob created? Um, I guess, I guess it, it kind of, I, I didn't, I don't recall thinking that way whenever I first, whenever I first got into Bigfoot stuff in the 90s and the t- early 2000s. I was excited and I just wanted to document and prove it, it existed. And after going through, you know, the change, being with the group and, um, I guess, meeting with different people and uh, talking to different people and stuff and doing eyewitness reports, it kind of, I kind of got to a point where I was just wanted to help people. And so, um, just give them information, as much as information that I could to help them out in their situation. So, and it, it kind of stemmed off that. So, you know, not caring about the word you know, in your own state about Native Americans, what they call Bigfoot, not caring about that. So it kind of went hand in hand with, you know, giving them information, giving them proper information. So, I mean, yeah. if, if you break it down, like, to that, you got to have proper information to help someone out. Ash, you got to... Any- uh, yeah, I mean, it makes sense because it sounds like, you know, people that do that are just piggybacking mm. off of other people's research. They're not actually doing their own. Yeah. And they're just taking what, you know, Read in the book or seen on TV and just going out in the woods and well we heard something over here but we're not actually going to take time to interview people and gather information we're just going to go on a whim and take what we learn from somebody else not from our own experience or from anybody else's reportings and just go in here blind and then look at what we did we didn't really put any work in we just changed the words around and used some adjectives and that that seems like it's setting more people up for fear. And being scared than it is to actually help them because they're going to go in and say Sasquatch lives over here. When I, I, I know you mentioned earlier, like if it's a raccoon, I'm going to hurt yeah. your feelings. Yeah. You know, so it's a raccoon over here, but they don't go do their their due diligence and they don't go do the correct in, investigation. They just say, hey, Sasquatch, boom, it's over there, bam. And everybody gets scared. Keep and, calling us and help us get a book deal. Yeah. And they make money. Right. Exactly. So... <clears throat> To me, it seems like your your dislike towards this this uh, this word Sasquatch is not um, it's not really towards the word itself. It's towards the use the, of the word, the usage for it. I mean, yeah, how they use it, where they use it, why they use it. It's not the word Sasquatch itself. It's it's how people use it. It's where people use it. It's is 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 that is that okay to say? Yeah, I mean it is because like I kind of like I I dislike Craig Woolheater because mm-hmm. he did he didn't go the extra mile he didn't care about people he didn't he he looked he looked to himself and he's gonna he's gonna probably say I didn't do that or I'm denying this or but that's the way he was because I was there mm-hmm. that's his mentality is I guess I guess it's the birth of it and stemmed off that so. People who don't care about, you know, mm-hmm. the subject and don't uh, respect it enough, then it 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 pulls my ire. So, so, so if somebody from British Columbia yeah. were to move to Texas, uh-huh. and they're Bigfoot researchers, yeah, and they use the word Sasquatch, are you going to call them lazy cowards? Yes. Because they're not in British Columbia. I'm, I'm not saying they're talking about Bigfoots here in Texas. Right. Maybe they're discussing Bigfoots from 
British Columbia in Texas. Not saying they live here, not right. saying they're from here, but maybe they're doing a comparison and they say Sasquatch, but then they say Bigfoot lives in Texas. Are right. you going to call them lazy cowards? No, if if they're making a comparison, you're, I mean that's that's oranges and apples. So. Okay, I'm just I'm just <laughs> getting to trying to get to the root of your your dislike of this uh, this this usage of this word. So, um, again, I, I I think it's your dislike is is stemming from people not understanding where it originated. Yeah, not understanding um, uh, the the proper usage of the word mm-hmm. and, and the proper uh, area to use the word. So I agree with that. Okay. Because yeah. I, I, I like, and I know you're not, you're not looking for my agreement. I just, <laughs> I agree with that. Um, just like you stated, you can't call every baseball fan a Yankees fan. No. Don't you dare. Um, because <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge baseball fan, and I absolutely cannot stand the Yankees. I wish that they would lose every single game. So I get that. Um, yeah. Samesies. Sorry, Diana. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I've, known you, I've known, you, known you quite a while, and I think this is the first time that we ever broke down your – I know that you didn't like it. Yeah, uh, but we never really broke down into the reasons why. You because I used to say Sasquatch at uh, at USBC, and you were like, "That's not uh, a <laughs> that's that scared me." <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. And, you, <laughs> and you would tell me you were like, um, you you would say, "I don't I don't like it when people use that word." <laughs> that's what you would tell me. And I was like, okay. And I was your friend, so I was like, okay. I, I'll just say it to annoy you from now on. <laughs> and yeah, I kind of feel the same way. We're gonna go squatching. It's good squatching time. Oh, that, that, yeah. that sounds go, that sounds squatchy. Squatchy. That sounds That's squatchy. squatchy. <laughs> Don't be a squatch. <laughs> so, you know, and I'm I'm totally okay with that. With with you know saying something squatchy or something. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Oh. But I'm just saying when when it when it boils down to doing research, helping someone. Finding information and you don't you, you don't bother to find mm-hmm. out what Native Americans you know what what your state calls a Bigfoot then so what yeah yeah uh, no go ahead I was gonna say especially in today's I mean you have a computer in your pocket all the time it's not mm-hmm. that hard to just go here it is that drives me crazy about all sorts of things it's like it takes five seconds to look it up on Google H- hence the word lazy words yes. lazy and mm-hmm. cowards yes. <laughs> So, so what you, you you keep hitting on the Native American, Native American, Native American, right? Um, what is we call them Bigfoot here, right? What is the Native American term for our region for Bigfoot? That's that's interesting that you say that because I think uh, about six months ago I reached out because like um, East Texas was pretty much predominantly uh, controlled by the by the Caddo Indians. And so they've, they've kind of spread out between East Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, uh, Oklahoma, right in that region. But predominantly all the sightings of Bigfoot were in, in East Texas. So I reached out to uh, an elder for, uh, I think it was um, Heritage for Caddo in, I think it was in Oklahoma City. I reached out to him, talked to him, um, and he said, I asked him, I said, is there a word for Bigfoot in Caddo? And he says, no. <laughs> There's not. So I said, well, I, that's kind of interesting because I, I mean, they're all, it's all over, all over this region. And he says, well, we don't have a word for it, but um, he, his belief was, I, I'm hopefully I'm, I'm getting this right, his interpretation right. But if I recall him talking to me, he was saying that it was, he believes that the cattle Indians came from the underground. So, and whenever the, his ancient ancestors came out from the underground, they were told not to look back. And so um, if you look back, that was the darkness. And so he uh, kind of said, you know, that was the Bigfoot, the darkness. Mm. So he didn't have a name for it. So I thought that was kind of odd. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you, if you ask me, the phrase Bigfoot is kind of lazy. Yeah. It's kind of a lazy term. It is. It's it's a quick term. It's just hey, the guy's got a big foot. 
you know, and let's call him Bigfoot. I know from I think some of the some of the people that I talked, some of the because whenever you whenever you you boil down to it, you interview people in East Texas, they they call it the local, the local. A few people have told me that. Hmm. So they call them the uh, locals because they've been around a lot longer than anybody else. I was gonna, they're kind of the <laughs> the beginnings. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't know because I, I guess with that and then I guess with the Texas Spanish War, um, they've they destroyed a bunch of totem poles and mm-hmm. ar- artifacts. And a stuff bunch like of the that. history. Yeah, a bunch of history. So you know it's up in the air. So I mean, I, I've I've actually just you know I probably should reach out to different Native Americans in the state and find mm-hmm. out what what's the word for big for or something close to it. So mm-hmm. but where what's the origin of Bigfoot? Where where did that come from? Bigfoot I believe we were talking about this off camera. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean off off show. Um off mic. I, wasn't it like a really old nose nose newspaper article? That someone had an encounter with it, and that's how they did like one of the descriptions, and they just ran with it from there. I believe it was um, a contractor in Northern California. I could be wrong. Um, let me see here. Looking it up real quick. Chris, are you, are you looking it up too? Trying to. Okay. From what I remember, I can't think of the guy's name, and I'll I'll just talk while you, you know. This uh, when I pull up uh, origin of the word Bigfoot, um, it's 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 talking about British Columbia again. It says Chief Michelle of the Inlakapamu at Lytton, British Columbia, told such a story to Charles Hill Tout in 1898. He named the creature. By a Salishan variant, meaning the being, the, the Benjamin faced one. Members of the Lumi tale tales about Tessemiquas, the local version of Bigfoot. But that doesn't really yeah, go it's, into it's, the. It's Salish, too. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's Salish. That might be the oldest known, like, written down story about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was in, what, 1898? Because I want to say that this was in California. I'm not sure what I was talking yeah. about. Yeah. I remember we, we were talking about it, but I don't remember exactly. Yeah, it was a, it was a, I can't think of the guy's name. So it was, um, it was a contractor. That was building um, roads for the state of California, and um, he had he hired he hired like Native American guys, right? I think so. He hired Native American guys to um, work on on the roads, on the construction stuff, and so he knew that these Native American guys were uh, very cultured in their in their beliefs, and so I think he actually did some fake footprint casts around. The, the job site and it caused all these Native Americans to quit and so he was he was still getting paid by the state um, and it, I think it was later found as, as a hoax but it, it made like the newspapers and for the life of me I can't think of the guy's name it just slips my mind but <clears throat> anywho hmm so getting back to the to Bigfoot stuff, it just chaps my hide when people use the word Sasquatch. So that's just that's just one. Of when the, the wrong people use the word Sasquatch, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks for the correction. I appreciate that. <laughs> so you guys, let me know when you pull that up. Uh, everything, everything I'm finding all goes back to the Selish, the the Selish Bigfoot. Everything that I'm looking up, it all, man, it all goes back to to that. Um, goes back to J. W. Burns. Um, back to him. 
Yeah, that that doesn't sound right to me. It's, it all it all goes back to that that Salish wild man, hairy man. Because he because um, he coined that what like in the 30s, right? It says. In the 1920s, Indian agent J.W. Burns compiled local stories, so 1920s. Um, The accounts were published again in 1940. Burns borrowed the term Sasquatch from the Halkamilim. That's another co-salish. And used it in the articles to to describe a hypothetical single type of creature portrayed in local stories. I think I... Maybe about one third of all claims of Bigfoot sightings are located in the Pacific Northwest. It's all it all goes back to that. I'm looking on history.com and it's talking about in 1958 journalist. That's it. Andrew Ginzoli of the Humboldt Times. I light a fun of dubious letter reading about a log in Northern California. Yeah. There we go. We discovered it on September 21st, 1958. You know a thing or two about a thing or two. Yep. I can, I can that's, dig that's up sounds, some shit. That sounds a whole lot better. Yeah. Now, yeah. Com. Bigfoot legend newspaper. So again, he was doing it for um, a, a publicity. Yeah. A story, a stunt. Yeah, because I think, um, I forgot whose book it was. I forgot whose book it was. I think it might have been John Green's book. But he was talking about the story about how this guy, like I was telling you, how this guy was scamming the state mm-hmm. because he knew that the Native Americans were he was hiring were, were going to quit on him and the state had to, had to pay him regardless of you know someone's religious beliefs. And mm-hmm. so they didn't want to work because they, they thought it infringed upon the uh, Bigfoot's territory. So they quit. And so the state had to pay him money regardless. So he got paid for doing, you know, a shoddy job. So yeah. So he he got a bunch of press, and I think he ran with it. And I think eventually, I think he may have been got he got caught in a hoax or something. So. Yeah, it's but a, anyway. yeah, it says here that later journalist Betty Allen published follow up articles, interviewed other loggers, and that's just kind of what the loggers were calling it because of the tracks. Right. Know? I, I figured it was just, I mean, people saw a Bigfoot, and they were like, oh, it's Bigfoot. Yeah. And it just kind of manifested and kind of well, organically I mean, grew on its it, own. It, it kind of did, because, like, mm-hmm. the guy is holding a big cast. Yeah. A big foot. And, mm-hmm. English just doesn't sound as pretty to us. Like, if it was that exact same thing in another language, like, that sounds cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Like it means Bigfoot. <laughs> it just it just sounds pretty. Because <laughs> I, I I mean honestly I think Sasquatch is a cool word. It is. It's, I think it, it's, it's it is a cool word. I yeah. would I would rather it be called Sasquatch than Bigfoot. Because yeah. it's yeah. it's it's a cooler word, and it I think that's like why it. I think that's why people jump on it. I think that's why people use it because it's yes yeah, it's, it's it catchy. Sounds, mm-hmm. yeah, it more it's fun, more though. attracting. It's it's um. Exotic. It's exotic. <laughs> so, but uh, I mean, I I don't hate the word. I just like you were saying, yeah, like you just you hate the the misuse of the word. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so anybody that knows me from the real Bigfoot community, um, they know that I jump on that. And just wanted to give a quick shout out to Simon Hicks the second, Michael Corey Devlin, John Roby, Willie Thomas. Uh, David B. Hall, all those guys, uh, Crystal Divine, they're all good people, and uh, they're my buds in different states, and we always, we always converge on that Facebook group, and I kind of like it. So, push, push, yes. <laughs> the real Bigfoot community. Yeah, I, I think it's cool sitting here tonight. Um, I finally, I finally realized your. Your true dislike for that word. I've known you for a while. I've known you for. <laughs> I, I always try to think of how many years I've known you. Man, you that know. I'm telling you, that stuff it brings out the old cliff in me. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, gangsta, 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 Bob. <laughs> but funny. I'm I'm real sweet too, you know. I like turtles. <laughs> so, so, 
I think that's cool. I mean, I'm still I'm still learning new new stuff about you and um yeah, you learned uh, blob squats last time. Yeah, blob squats. Never knew what a blob squats was. Never even knew that was anything. It is. It and isn't anything. It's just no. It's a blob squats. No, it's nothing. <laughs> that means it's nothing. That means it's nothing. Yeah. It's your thumb. It's this hairy wannabe picture of Bigfoot. Oh God. So. <laughs> yeah. It's zoomed in so much that the pixels are an inch wide, but that's what it is. I just, when we were looking at that picture, the more I looked at it, I just, it really, I was like, how do people believe that this right here, you know, because, I mean, if you really want to, and, and if, if you really want to make your mind see a structure of a body, you can, Yeah. but it's so blurry, and it's so distorted, and it's so just, there's so much. like it was shot on a 19... 19- 40s camera i mean i don't know i've I've taken pictures in the dark before yeah with my phone and they've been better than that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah i think sebastian could take better pictures yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry yeah you're sweet i just no that i mean that picture was like i don't know how you can post that and it and expect anybody to yeah to believe that and then i was watching um uh when i was on lunch at work i was watching this video and i think it was in russia mm-hmm. and there was there was a video of this family in a car you can see the back of the car right yeah it was like man that it was really again really blurry and it was raining so there was like rain on the windows but you could see like this crazy like creature looking thing rise up behind the fence and then it goes back down and then it starts chasing them and then it stops and then it squats and looks like it's taking a dump and then it gets back up and then it runs and i mean it was it i can't remember i remember seeing it a long time ago but was it on all fours or was it 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 would it would be on all fours and then it would stand up Mm -hmm. and then it would go back on all fours and then it Mm kind of squatted and you never really got actually it was um it was that guy's videos that the guy that breaks down uh, Bigfoot videos, uh, uh, Katie uh, Katie Davis, uh, um, M- MK Davis, MK Davis. It was one of his that he was breaking down, and I mean this thing was going like standing up on two legs, kind of squatting down and running, look like an ape. Sometimes it would run with its arms in front of it. Sometimes it would run with its arms like out to its side. I mean it was really Russia. I think it was Russia. Okay. I want to say that it was Russia. Um, mm. But, man, it was really, really poor quality got it. Uh, film. You got it? You got it? Yeah. That Hello, one. I'm M.K. Davis. This right here is a clip. It's a clip from um, your clip. Oh, it's a t- No offense. I'm going to fast forward. No, that's not it. That's, that's not it. But that's, that's, that's a different thing. But, yeah. That's but that's what the other one looked like. That's what the other one looked. The other one was like uh like they were in the car and they were like looking out of the back. Like okay. looking right out the side window but to the back. I think I saw that a long time ago. Um but I, I've seen so many okay, kind of But I was look. I was There is my boy Lestrone. That looks familiar. Yep, that's it right there. That- yeah, Ash just found it. Sweet. Too sweet. Yeah, when it was at, when he posted it, May 16th, 2019, is when he posted it. Um, but you can tell it's really bad quality. Yeah, like an old flip phone video. Or yeah. Like that. But you'll see it, it like pops up and, and it. Oh, yeah, I see it. We used to you see it. And it looks like he's hopping kind of. Sometimes he'll go on all fours, sometimes he'll stand up, sometimes he'll like sit there and like. Look like right there. Looks like he's squatting to take a dump. <laughs> yeah, we used to say, so, "When in doubt, throw it out." Yeah, yeah, and and I'm I'm looking at this, and I mean I don't know what's chasing yeah. them. I don't know what's what's after them. Yeah. Here's the thing too that I don't remember who pointed this out to me the first time too, but like, um, one thing that kind of gives away that oh that's a person. I don't remember which video it was. It was one where. 
one was supposed to been running down a hill like it's a big open field and it's right. just running and it looks down and it continues to run. It's like how many times have you seen a wild animal watch where it's walking? When yeah, it's, the, it's, like it's just natural to them. It's all natural. Yeah. yeah, and that's what it looked like this thing was doing. <laughs> it's probably a person that they couldn't like yeah, he, get around very he, well and stuff when it's watching where they're walking. And he's probably had to adjust his mask. That. Yeah, had to adjust his mask and can't feel the ground because <laughs> of its fake feet. You know, whatever. <laughs> Hack. Yeah. <laughs> and see, I've watched this uh, MK Davis. I've watched several of his breakdowns of the Patty, uh, yeah. the Patterson Gimlin film. Mm-hmm. He's got a ton of them out there. And I've watched several of them. And to me, he's trying to make me believe that this is Bigfoot. And watching him, watching his films, mm. make me even more of a skeptic. The way he breaks them down, it and he's he's trying to convince people that it really is Bigfoot. And the way that he's breaking them down, the way that I I interpret the way he's doing it, it just it makes me it's off putting. Yeah, yeah, it makes me even a bigger like, skeptic. Yeah. This is real. Believe it. This is what you want to see. It's leading. And yeah, I don't I'm not about that I, either. I, you know, I don't need him to break it down for me to believe it. I, yeah, it's I the video I mean the the 35 millimeter enough is to me it still gives me chills watching it. But Yeah. He I think he cuz I I actually was at one of his presentations in person. And he breaks it down extensively, and then he broke it down enough where he, I think, I can't remember what year it was, but he was saying that he believed that um, Bigfoot had braided hair. I said, come on, man. Really? And then it was carrying something. I remember one of them was saying he was, like, carrying a satchel. Yeah. Okay. Like, Patty was carrying a satchel around her neck, and then and he slowed pack. it down, and it was, like, this big object that was bigger than her hand, and it was swinging, and... And in one <laughs> shot it would be there, and another shot it wouldn't be there. No. A, a fanny pack? Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I think yeah. that's been like people try to say like that it's a baby or stuff like that too. I think I'm not sure. I was what a, to say, but yeah. I was a big MK Davis fan back in the day, and I was one of his supporters. And there was like people. This was back when Alabama, mm. Alabama, form was around and this was before Facebook and so people used to go to different forums and chat and chat rooms and stuff and there was a lot of people bad mouthing him there and I used to go defend him all the time and uh, I it was just one of those things that I defended him so much and then um, and we'll get into the story later on um, on another show but um, he was he was uh, broke down a lot of Mike Sells stuff in Lamar County and you know and after he, after he started doing that, I kind of just not one of his fans because I asked him in person. I mean, I called him and said, don't go through these films. Don't do it because just don't want you to do it. The the guy that 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 had these videos, he's already passed away and, you know, he doesn't want this and stuff, but he did it anyway. So. So I'm not a big MK Davis fan. So it's just me. Yeah, I just. I think that if you're. If you're going to put the stuff out there, I think I think he just I don't know for for me it just made me a bigger skeptic because he was like changing the colors and yeah. changing the 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 graphics of it and all that. And I'm like, well, if if it's legit, you shouldn't have to change anything to right. prove right. to somebody that it's real. Yeah. Um, and I have no doubt that he believes it's real. I have no doubt that you believe it's real. But this guy is, is is supposedly trying to get people to believe in Bigfoot. And when you tamper with the evidence to try and prove your point, or lack thereof. right there, yeah. I'm I'm done. He, I'm like, yeah. He had it at his presentation. He had like a big blown up picture, seven foot tall. I'm sorry, that's not so, <laughs> Bigfoot. And so this is back when I think I had left the TBRC, but I went to the TBRC conference anyway. And I, that's probably a bad idea, but I went anyway. So, <laughs> but, uh, I, I went to a parking lot in one of those. Last time I went out with Luke, we just happened to be uh, camping out at Lake of the Pines the same weekend, coincidentally, you know. Yeah. And we just went and hung out in the parking lot around lunch. 
just to see who we could see and see if we could get some people to come out with us and they'll leave the conference. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> come hang out with us. And a few did. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of TBRC. Really? Yeah. I would have never guessed. Hadn't picked up on that. <laughs> I mean, I thought I thought you loved those. I think those I think, group. and I'm I'm going to talk about this. This is kind of funny. This is back when I was, and this is part of paranormal a bit. Uh, I was with Kendall, and we were, and um, we went to Mike Hall was doing a charity event in Atoka, Oklahoma. And so I'm a good friend of Mike Hall's, and I, it's the first time I ever talked about him, but he's a really good dude. Uh, he's an actor, and um, the, he was, I think he was in the TBRC after I left. And so um, he was doing an event in Atoka, so I went to it. Kendall and I went to it, and we did. And it's it's an old Civil War uh, cemetery, so Kendall and I went there, and we did some EVPs. We got about eleven EVPs in. And, wow! And, and at 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 one time, yeah, at one time, and we actually nice. we actually broke it down that night and presented it the very next day. So, and it was t- it was a it was a it was a Bigfoot paranormal deal, so it was kind of cool. And Craig Woolheater was there. <laughs> so, so he was there, and uh, I was with Kendall, and I told Kendall about our, you know, our our past, and so she told me, just play it cool, be nice. I said, okay. For her, I did it. So she didn't know this guy. She didn't know him. She knew, she knew about you know the past I had with him and stuff like that. So she <laughs> she says, just play it cool, be nice, be professional. I said, okay, I will, and I I did it for her because I I respect her a great deal. And so I walked over to Craig <laughs> and I was, you know, I was being nice and I, yeah. I stuck out my hand. I said, Hey man, what's up? Um, I stuck out my hand, I, you know, for him to, ha- to shake my hand. I said, Hey, let's bury the hatchet. And he goes, no, not shaking your hand, not doing it. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. <laughs> and I go, oh, and I, bitch. man, I'm telling you, man, if you, if you were there, you could probably see the steam coming out of my ears. I was so pissed. I was so pissed. I was so angry. And Kendall was standing behind me, so she was kind of like walking up to me, like trying to grab my arm to pull me away. Not here, Robert. And it, it, was, it, was, it was Craig, uh, Jerry Heston, Tammy Heston, and Marcy Woolheater there at the time. So my hand is just extended out, and this guy's shaking his head, no, 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 no. I go, and I lean toward him really, really close to his face. I go, you sure about that? You sure? Are you positive? This is the last time I'm gonna stick my hand out. You sure? I go, okay. And I walked off. And so I tried. I tried to be a nice guy. I tried to be a good guy. He refused to do it. So Kendall tells me, goes, Oh, Bobby, you, you handled that well. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I felt God, like I did it. What a petty little bitch. I know. He 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 was. And then like ten minutes later, Marcy, his wife, walks up to me and she says, Bob, I'm sorry. He's acting that way. I apologize for him. I said, you don't need to apologize for him. I tried. I stuck my hand out. So I tried. So. You know she's got to do that constantly. Yeah. Oh, my God. How embarrassing. I hate, I hate that for her. They're, they're, they're no longer together. So. Oh, good for so, her. Yeah, good for her. Run. So, so if I see this dude again, he's, he's going to get super kicked. No, yeah, starts beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> You're stretch. gonna hurt your hammy again. You know, talking talking about stretching. This is totally off topic of what we're talking about. It's talking about stretching. Um, I was patching a hole in 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 my roof. Um, oh yeah, Zoe's, uh, Zoe's right. Zoe's yeah. And uh, I tell you what, climbing up the ladder and and stretching my leg up to get on the my my hammies are sore, man. And we're supposed yeah. to play softball. And on we're Tuesday. supposed to play softball on Tuesday. I'm like. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna make it, man. <laughs> I was. It got uh, rained out, so it's all good. Yeah. I was in I was in South Texas, you know, at a funeral this past this past year, and um, I was showing um, my nephew's wife Blair how to super kick in, in the oh hotel room. Oh lord! <laughs> <laughs> she I would, you should have videoed that. Yes. I would have loved to oh, see that. So be a family heirloom. So I wow. I, I extend out my 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 right leg and I you know my upper torso went down and I kicked the door 
And when I did it, I pulled my hammy. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, like, oh, Lord. And then, oh, man. I had, I had to drive back. I had to drive back. And then <laughs> with a pulled hammy. With a pulled hammy. It was, it was. From basically Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't pull my hammy, but it definitely is sore. I can yeah. tell you that, and that's just from this morning. Wow! No, yesterday morning. So, man, that's crazy. Yeah. So I'm. I'm. Softball is gonna gonna hurt. <laughs> it's gonna be fun though. Yeah. We'll see. So. <laughs> we'll see. So. So. I um. I remember you said. You left TBRC. Uh, Wool Eater left TBRC, but he still runs TBRC. Yeah. Um, because you said they split. You had to have a PhD to go, on, go into this other group, right? Yeah, the North American Wood Ape Conservancy. Uh, so everything that was the original TBRC belongs to that group. Yeah. And he had to start from scratch with yeah, with he, everything on his own. Yeah, he 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 doesn't even have a he doesn't even have a website. He he restarted the TBR scene. He got some members on there that are they're still my friends on Facebook, and um, they're with him. I for what reason I have no idea. That was why. that was going to be my question because if he started another TBRC, got kicked out of the TBRC, started another one. Who is he running with? He's running with. Um, I believe it's Gino Napoli, uh, Monica Rawlings. That's the only people that I know. He probably has more more people on it. And the M- Monica is actually somebody I recruited when I was with the TBRC. She's a good good lady and uh, a good researcher. Gino's great. I, I'm still friends with him on Facebook. He's a good dude. I love him. But why he follows Craig, I have no that idea. That was because I know you you said you're. Your nephew, by the time he was twelve, clocked more hours right. in in the woods than this guy. Um, I I don't I'm I don't understand the intrigue to follow somebody that hasn't that hasn't put in. You know, I'm not gonna follow a, a football coach if he doesn't know anything about football, right? Or if he hasn't put in his his time. I I, I guess I can't say that because not all football coaches played football. Um, that yeah. might be, that might be a bad analogy. Well, I mean, you, you you're not gonna you're not gonna take advice of a hunter that actually hasn't pulled the trigger. Or well, the woods, I mean, right? right, that's true. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take the advice of a tracker that hasn't tracked anything in its right. life, so, in his life or her life. Um, I was just gonna see how many metaphors you guys could come up with. <laughs> it was about five. <laughs> I can come up with some more, um, but um, but yeah, I just uh, I, I just. You know, I'm intrigued with Bigfoot. Yeah. yeah. And if I want to go find Bigfoot, I, I want to go with somebody that has been in the woods. Mm-hmm. That Luke, has Luke Gross. Yeah, that's. I mean, like like Luke Gross. I mean, he's the. I mean, obviously the one that I know the most about, and I don't know anything about him because I don't know him. I just know what y'all told me. Right. But I mean, if I'm gonna go into the <laughs> to the to the woods or or go. Uh, Bigfoot hunting. I want somebody that can dig up wild onions and say, "Eat these." And yeah, right, and what pars- is it? Parsimons off of <laughs> off of trees and say, "Here, eat these." And, and he find he knows where all the Mexican plums are at. So. Yeah, Mexican plums. That's Man, where, that's that, that right there is usually what you know. That, that'll make you they, go they, to the bathroom. Well, allegedly, they really like them. You know, which leads me to another thing that I've that I've been thinking about. I'm. That's kind of a. Pretty awesome segue into what I was wanting to talk about. Um, plums. Plums make you poop. Um, yeah. If Bigfoot are out there, they got to dump. Yeah. They have to. Yeah. So they, they usually do like really big logs, like huge logs. Yeah. So have you have you come across Bigfoot poop? Yeah, actually I actually have. A lot of it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I actually have. Uh, I know when I was running with Ken Marvel and... Tim Clay and Mike Sells and Buddy Britt. Kenny, probably correct me if I'm wrong, um, but he had a buddy that was um, was a DNA guy, a sequence guy in, I want to say DePaul, mm-hmm. Chicago. And anything that we found was it at the University of DePaul? Yeah, it was. And so he was a he was like, I guess, um, interning or he was a new student. So he was he he knew Ken Marvel and. 
whatever we found, we just send it to him. I remember you talking about this guy with the hair on the fence. Right, right. And you send it to him like six different times, and he's like, this is contaminated. Yeah, use gloves. And then you would do everything he said. He says, use, use an envelope. Yeah, up. use an envelope, da 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 And then he found out you're hunting Bigfoot, and he quit. Yeah, he, he stopped doing it. So, yeah. So, um, so would you send the poop to him? I believe we did. I, I wasn't. How with, would you send this giant I, log? In a Tupperware. <laughs> Actually, I was I I remember <laughs> Tupperware. I don't know, man. I don't remember who it was that told me and said that, that at one point in time that they had one in their freezer in a Tupperware. <laughs> um, I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of poop, and then um, <laughs> I've seen a bunch of poop, but I I've never um collected it, and I never sent I never sent mm-hmm. it. I'm sure Kenny and. And Buddy Britt and Tim Clay probably did, but I don't recall doing it. Because I, I have I have an 82-pound dog. Yeah. All right? And when this 82-pound dog takes a turd or leaves a turd, whatever you want to call it, he yeah. drops his business. They're massive. Yeah. I mean, they're big. They're big turds. He's not seven foot tall, eight right. foot tall. Right. So these... These have to be these these are big ginormous. They're like big branches. Yeah, like so, like that's what I'm thinking. Branches off of a tree. Yeah, I've never. And again, I said I've been hunting quite a bit. I've never come across a turd that big. Well, you you do all your hunting in West Texas. You don't go. I knew you were going to say that. That's why. That's why I went there because I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> So I I wanted to say this really quick before we go into another subject, but I was I was kind of this week I didn't talk to you guys about this, but I was kind of I was kind of internet creeping somebody. Oh, <laughs> we all do it. So it's I was okay. I was internet and creep because like we were talking I think episode, maybe it maybe was push past hack we were talking about Noack, uh North American. Yeah, what we were trying thing. to figure out how does Noaka Wappa or whatever. Right. Yeah, so I went on their website this week and I was looking at all their sighting reports to see if my name was still in there. So I went back and it was like a couple of counties that I know I did, and I went back to go look to see if my name was in there or if they just took it off. So I went back and looked, and this son of a bitch, <laughs> oh, Craig Wilder, puts his name on it. I was gonna it. say. I- I knew that's what happened, and like he was putting down because, like, I re- I remember these comments and stuff. I go, those those are mine, and like he was putting down his, and I go, well, no. is this after you left? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he they had all of the rights course. to it, so they used of it. Of course, he did that. That's all he did. Yeah, from what I understand, I mean, just slaps his name on it. I mean, if you ever watched that fucking show Monster Quest when he was on it, all you ever saw was his face, but he never did shit. Yeah, he used to say. I've never researched something like I've all the research. I've got some mother. I go, MF, you never even researched anything. You can say fuck. Yes, <laughs> Motherfucker. Motherfucker. We know you're just putting on for the cameras. And once they're off, your ass went back to the hotel room. So he was putting his name on this stuff. So I think I went back and looked. It was probably like maybe I pulled up seven had his name on it. I said, I know he didn't do any of these. So I know either I did it. Ken Marvel did it. Tim Clay, um, probably some other people. Um, I'm forgetting, and I apologize if I forgot your name, but he was putting all his name on all this stuff. So, so I was in there creeping on Nowak. So, so I don't, I don't know the people at Nowak. I'm sure they're good people. I don't know, but I don't. I'm gonna give them a pass because because they like let them do it. Yeah, and because I remember asking you, and I mean it might have been on the pilot. It, it might have been on question. It might have been on pushback. It might have been on all of them. I don't know. But I know I've asked you the question before that, and, and you give me the answer. They took all your stuff. Yeah. Or you left it all there. Yeah. And they they pretty much could do whatever they want with it. Yeah, they can. So, so I, when you left, I mean, he said free reign. I'm going to take credit for yeah, what yeah. Bob did, and I'm going to put my name on it. And throw it out there, and probably deny he was ever and, involved. And that's what I was going to say. And if you ask if if Bigfoot Bob was involved, he's going to say no. Yeah. And again, I can't say that for sure. I don't know him, but super kick. Yeah. 
Don't stretch. pull your hammy. Stretch. Stretch. <laughs> stretch. Sweet chin music. Stretch bad. <laughs> so Or stretch good. Whichever so one you want to. This, this funny story is that um, Ken Marvel is, a, you know, you guys haven't met Ken Marvel, but he's he's a hoot. And he's uh, he's a funny dude. <laughs> when we left the TBRC, he would. Uh, did think, y'all leave at the same time? No, I left before he did. I left, but I knew he was going to leave too. But he had, I think he had other obligations. You know, Kenny's the type of guy that. If he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. So I think he was emceeing for the TBRC conference. So mm-hmm. he told he was going to emcee it. So he emceed it. And, and then I gone. think after that, he left. So All right. so when y'all left? So when when I left and then he left, we were doing stuff in Lamar County with Mike Sells. And we were going up to uh, the Kimichi Mountains and stuff and doing stuff. And so to get under my skin, Kenny would call me up and say, hey, Bob. I was reading the internet yesterday, and guess what Craig said about you? <laughs> <laughs> I was reading the he's, internet. So he used to tell me that all the time. And I, he used to rob me. I go, Kenny, you better be fucking kidding me because I'm going to kill that son of a bitch. <laughs> and so he would, like, he would just get his rocks off by telling me, hey, Bob, guess what uh, Wool Eater said about you? <laughs> so he used, to do, he used to do it on purpose just to get, just to get me going. And so, Kenny, much love for you. So, <laughs> so anyway. So now I know how to get you stirred up. Nah, I've got to pass that. <laughs> so we're. 50- no, I'm talking about Sasquatch. Oh, yeah. I'm good. I'm good with that. Because you know it already. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a shirt that says Sasquatch. I believe in Sasquatch. Yeah. So we're. 50- I'm Squatchy. We're 56 minutes in. And we, we're just we, getting started. We talked 56 minutes about Sasquatch. Simone. Well, not all about Sasquatch, but. I know. Simone. Simone, catch your tongue. So, uh, you guys want to jump subjects? You guys want to talk a little bit more Bigfoot? I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go into to the spooky spooks. Okay. All right. Let's see here. We're going to jump subjects here. Here we go. The paranormal. Mm-hmm. I love, I love doing that. Yeah, it's cool. I like it. So, anywho, so anywho, we're in the paranormal now. So, you have any fun facts or anything like that? Uh, man, I I totally bombed on the fun facts today. Did you? I'm sorry. I might get kicked off the show. <clears throat> so. um, oh no! I had man. one job. Yep. One job, bring the fun facts, and I couldn't even do that. Mm-hmm. So I will say this right now, and this is like a technical thing right here, right now. Before we go into paranormal, that that key I just hit, it's stuck. So we're gonna have to do no sound effects the rest of the way. <laughs> it's stuck right now, so I gotta have what it on low. See, what does that mean? <laughs> we just have to have background music the whole time. <laughs> so I have to. Pay it won't stop. I have, I have to wait till it's finished. So I think it's like six minutes or something. Oh <laughs> <laughs> At least it's cool music. Yeah. We're still learning, man. We're still learning. Maybe I don't know what it's, just, it's, it's stuck. It doesn't want to stop. See, like I'm, I'm hitting a button. It's not stopping. <laughs> That's awesome. It started over. At least it's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it might even yeah bring in like a cool little vibe when I'm. Well, it, it's going to go off for another minute and. Okay. 12, 12 seconds. So. All right. So um, a few. I want to. Am I been on Push Pash Hack? Yeah. Was it or was it question session? Um, um, I think it was Push Pash. I think it was Push Pash Hack. Um, we talked about my, my aunt and uncle traveling yeah. to uh, haunted hotels and they stayed in a couple and I uh, asked some questions. Um, and she was kind enough to to send me a, a text message and answer some of the questions that I that I asked mm-hmm. on the uh, on the show. Which again, thank you very much, uh, and hope you're the best. Um. So this is the this is the text message she sent me, and it's it's going to answer some of the questions. I'll read the text, and again, uh, after I read the text, we'll go. 
we'll kind of dig our claws into it. Um, before you before you do that, um, what just kind of say what location you're talking about? Yeah, it. She says it here. Okay. Um, she gives the locations. Um, cool. It says uh, as far or as for the Skirvine Hotel. And the TV incident. So they were staying in the the, the Skirvine. Um, yeah, this is this is the one where she she uh, she was asleep, and the TV came on. I'm just gonna read the right. the text. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. It was a new TV. It was plugged into an outlet with no other things plugged in. The remote was on the bed, so I very well could have rolled over on it. However, when the TV came on, I was laying on my back and the remote was to my side. So I don't really see how I could have. Uh, I don't see how I could have really rolled over on it. Can't remember what was on the TV. Stuff like that doesn't really freak me out or scare me. And I've had the TV come on in the night before in other instances. Anytime I turned it off, it would come back on again. So in this case, I had prior knowledge that the hotel was supposed to be haunted. So I just decided to not even turn the TV off and wait for it to come back on again because I wanted to sleep. Um, Regarding the hotel in Jefferson, the only information I had going into that hotel is that it was reported to be haunted. People had reported uh, hearing noises, uh, covers being pulled off of them in the night and that sort of thing. Regarding how heavy I was sleeping, I actually had just dozed off as it was only about 7 p.m. I was waiting to go down for um, my uncle, uh, not her uncle. I don't know. I'm not going to use his name because I don't know if he wants me to use his name. Gotcha. Um, her husband uh, show and just fell asleep for a few minutes. I'm a pretty light sleeper. My, my uncle's in a band. So mm-hmm. they were in Jefferson. He was doing a show. Right. So she's just dozing off before he was doing sound check. So she's dozing off. Uh, I'm a pretty light sleeper anyway. So I would have known if anyone came in the room. And I'm pretty positive I felt a touch on my back and it wasn't my imagination. The next day we were told, uh, we told the people that run the hotel and it <clears throat> about it. And they said, uh, they hear that all the time. They also told us of other guests that reported lying in bed watching television and chains that they had laid on their end table flying across the room. That's scary. Yeah. So she also went to tell me that in our room above the bed hung a framed dress. We noticed it and took a picture of it because it looked really old. It appeared to be a baby's dress. She went on to tell us that it belonged to a baby whose family was staying there. They were in Jefferson for the baby's christening, and that was the baby's christening dress. The baby died shortly after the christening. She didn't give any details on how the baby died. She also informed us that the hotel, in addition to being a saloon and brothel, was also a funeral home. She told us the bodies were kept upstairs, which is where we were sleeping. Mm. So, and she sent me a picture of the dress, which, I mean, it looks like a really, really old dress. I can't get it to pull up here. I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> Do you think you but can post that on the, see. yeah. You think you can post that on the, the Facebook group? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'll post it on there. So she answered a lot of questions in here that we had. Um, yeah. Well, you, actually every question you had every question i had right about the um, TV. about the tv how old it was it was new it was only plugged into one outlet um the tv i mean the remote was on the bed so she could have rolled over it but she said she was on her back and it was to her side one thing um, one thing i found interesting because mm-hmm. i know in your original story you didn't say how many times the tv went in on and off yeah and then she she kind of said that it, she turned it off and it kept coming back on. So, well, this she was saying not in this instance. Okay, she said that in other instances the TV would come off and on. She would like in other instances not whenever at this hotel. Whenever the TV would come on, she would turn it off and then it would just come back on. So, so instead of playing off and on TV with the ghost, she's like, "I want to go to sleep," so I just left it on. So whenever I guess whenever they checked in, she 
turned it on and turned it off and it kept coming back on. No, 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 no. This, whenever she's talking about the off and on, yeah, that's not even at this hotel. Okay. That's other instances in her life. Gotcha. Like other times this had happened. Okay, okay. Because I was, yeah. was kind of confused. I yeah. Thought, Man, I thought that was going so off and on. So that's something that happens to her a lot no matter where she's at. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at. So she's, she's attracting all this stuff. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of what I'm getting. Okay. And, um... So that was that was spooky. I mean, TV yeah. coming on and all that. But so again, it, go ahead. It might not have anything to do with either locations. I know that allegedly they're haunted, and that's what they kind of market themselves mm-hmm. on. But if these things have happened to her in other places, maybe it just happens to her. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because she could be attractive. She yeah. she could be yeah. She could be a channel for them. I mean, it, it, this place could or be. She has yeah. something that follows her. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, or it could be. Her, you know. I give her more credit. You never know. You know? Or it, it could be haunted, and it's just attracted to her. Right. She's right. there. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the one with the hand on the back. Yeah. Okay. Um. One of the questions that that that. I would ask her again as I as I hear more about the story as this baby comes up mm-hmm. um, is did she feel could she feel if it was a, a, a normal size hand or was, a baby size hand? I was hand? just about to say that. I yeah, was about to ask that question <laughs> because if I mean if a baby died, I mean a little hand. Yeah, a little hand. Uh, that, that, that that kills me. It man. does. Look at that man! I get chills <laughs> everywhere. That kills me, man. It's sad, and then it's also extra creepy. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why. Why is that? The babies are more creepy, like dead babies. <laughs> I don't know why. Like in movies, and they stuff they. Like that. I, I don't know. I guess like it's it, because they're so precious. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. when they're, they're alive, when they're innocent, yeah, they become this unknown thing that's perceived as malevolent because we don't understand. That's not that's not normal. It shouldn't be here. Yeah, you know? and that's what makes it so. Uh, taboo makes it so like ah, that's not right Ow. <laughs> sorry loud, so sorry. yeah that's that's another question i would ask her uh knowing the baby the baby part now um is the size of the hand um i know that uh she's a mom uh she has children and if this baby you know i mean that's this this baby might be attracted to her because because she's a mom because she's a mom right you know, and the baby's mom's not there, so she's just going in the the baby. I don't know if the baby's a, a boy or a girl. It just says baby, um, and I know boys got they were they were christened in dresses too. Right. I know that yeah. whenever yeah back then they, yeah, they back wore then. dresses for for a while. Yeah, I mean, it's easier. So I I did not know that. That's actually yeah. that's you learn something every day. Yeah, so. yeah boys boys wore. White, I mean, just like that. Was White that and pink? Pink used to be was for that, boys. Yeah, it's an offshoot of red. Just, just like that. Was that? Was that a? Is that a Catholic thing? It's. I believe so. I believe it's a Catholic uh, Catholicism. Yeah, for christenings. Yeah, but I mean, even back then, like. I mean, I know back. I know back in the like, day, like in the, like the eight turn in the last century. Yeah, eighteen like that, early nineteen hundreds. Dressing was pretty much gender neutral. Yeah, more or less. Boys had long hair too, and because my and stuff, my papa you know? he he wore a nightgown. Yeah, like a an actual nightgown, like, like a dress. It was probably easier too because everybody wears the same clothes, so you have well, more kids, and you just pass, you know. And I think too um, back then. Uh, they had outhouses. Yeah. And if I'm going to an outhouse, it's cold. It, it's cold. Right. I want to be fully, fully close. Plus, I want easy access. I don't want to have to be dealing with. I just want to pick it up and go. You know How what? How do you think girls feel all the time? Every time we have to go to the bathroom, it's yeah. like that. So <laughs> you, you know what I think about whenever you say that, like that long dress or like I, I remember watching I Love Lucy. Um, Ethel Merckx mm-hmm. would always wear those. Yeah. And so, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I just thought of that, but. Just stick, sticks in my Fred mind. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and again, <clears throat> I like how she was, uh, she put in here that she's, um, she had just fallen asleep because mm-hmm. that was one of the things that we had talked about. If, if she was really exhausted, tired, if she was in a deep, deep sleep, um, sometimes your, your mind can run around it. Well, she wasn't. She had, I mean, she had just fallen asleep. Um, and she said she's a pretty light sleeper, um, so it doesn't take much to, to to wake her up. And she said, you know, I felt the touch on my back, and it wasn't my imagination. Like again, 
I, we can distinguish, distinguish, you know, if it's a touch on our back, if it's a hand, or if it's, you know, because I've, I've, I rarely wear a shirt when I go to sleep. Very, very rarely. It's got to be pretty cold for me to wear a shirt. But I've worn a shirt to bed and I've rolled over and it felt like somebody touched me. Right. Um, <clears throat> but I can tell the difference between, you know, my shirt rubbing against my back or when my wife touches me on the back. Right. I know the difference. So, I mean, I, I, I truly believe that, that my aunt got touched on the back. And again, it used to be a uh, funeral home. Yeah. Yeah. And they held, they housed the dead bodies in this room. God, that's creepy. In this room where they were, where they were sleeping. So you got a baby, you got dead bodies, you got a saloon, you got a brothel, mm-hmm. and all kinds of fun stuff that's happened since then. Yeah. <laughs> so there's lots of energy. So there's lots of energy in there. I mean, I know in saloons, man, people would kill people all the time. Yeah. Anger. Yeah. Um, brothels I know that those guys they would rape and murder those girls all the time mm-hmm. it happened well and too in those places a lot of people passing through you know I was talking about earlier you know that uh, the one of the most famous stories in Jefferson is Diamond Bessie and that's kind of what it was was her and her gentleman friend were passing through nobody knew who they were and he ended up murdering her and I'm not I'm not sure if they ever caught him but they found her I think out by the cypress after after a while, you know, he, I, I don't, I don't. It's been a while since you know, I've heard the story, but basically, the town came together and made her very, very nice gravesite, raised money for that and everything, and gave her a funeral because they didn't know who she was. And yeah, I'm sure that there was plenty of other people that that happened to there. Or they don't even have a gravesite. Yeah. Anymore, so. Hey, I was going to ask you, did you did you want to talk about that story? The that one? story? Oh. Yeah. Since we're yeah. talking about Jefferson. Yeah. 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 yeah I was. I, I was. Because I'm not sure if it did happen outside that saloon. I'm pretty sure one time I heard that story, but you know. But it's in fun. Jefferson, right? It's in Jefferson, yeah. right? It's this story that if anyone ever, ever, ever goes to Jefferson, I really recommend going and checking out the cemetery down there. It is the, hang on just a second, the Oakwood cemetery gosh it's been for forever since i've been there and been there half a dozen times i thought it was a creepy story yeah it is a pretty Um, creepy story of course and i know i'm not sure if it's accurate i don't think everybody you know i'm looking at this side for a refresher but basically the story was that these two friends they're like best friends but also yeah you know they fought all the time and their names are bill rose and jesse robinson one was a let me see which one was which. Um, forgive me just a second. Okay. Um, Bill Rose ran a blacksmith shop. Jesse Robinson was claimed to be a lawman and a detective, but, you know, it is the 1800s, so people said a lot of things. They're not really sure if that was true or not, but basically they fought all the time and argued, and it eventually came down to where they ended up killing each other over a drink. Um it says over a drink over a drink wow like they ran into each other downtown it says on april 4th 1871 robinson bumped into rose in downtown jefferson texas robinson offered to buy rose a drink but his friend turned him down and you know they kind of got into an argument that rose said that he had given up drinking attempt to you know kind of turn his act around right this was taken as an insult because the other guy, Robinson, he, uh, you know, they got into it and he chased after him and screaming and fighting and saying he was going to kill him all over that drink. You know, they got into it. I'm sure he probably had one tied on already. They ended up getting in the gunfight. Um, they almost sound like a couple. Yeah. I mean, it's quite, it's quite possible, you know, you yeah. know. but, um, Eventually, what happened was Ch- chasing him and stuff. So, was since the blacksmith okay, Rose shot at Robinson, ran towards the back door. Rose stopped him with the shot in the leg. Robinson fell down, and they continued shooting at each other. Um, 
Robinson died, and shortly after, Rose staggered out of his blacksmith shop into the street and began coughing up blood, and he later died as well. Wow. That's and, pretty violent. Yeah. Yeah. What, it's the 1800s, man. Texas. And cowboy the, days, but... So the, the part is creepy is what, what you're about to talk about, right? Yeah. Okay. If you go to the cemetery, Oakwood Cemetery, I believe it is behind the... Uh, I think it's the Brookshire's or the Kroger there in Jefferson... But it's a really, it's a really beautiful cemetery, and um, there is these markers that look like, uh, what are they called? It's like the Freemasons, but you know, you see the big yeah. logs. I forget what they're called, but it's kind of, it looks like a smaller version of that. There's two of them in the ground. They're made out of iron. They have a chain between the two of them, and the story goes that they buried them next to each other and ran iron rods through their coffins. And then this decorative piece was put on top at the ground level, and then they chained them together after chaining their caskets together, too, so that they would be stuck with each other for eternity. Wow. Whether this is true or not, I don't know, but that's I, the I urban w- legend. I would love to do more research on this. Yeah. Thing, yeah. So mm-hmm. that's like, that's weird. I have never heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. Running rods through, through coffins. One chaining coffins together, you know. I mean, there's there's been people that have been married sixty, seventy years, and they don't have their their coffins yeah. chained together. You, you know, when you were talking about the story, if he, if you not had said Jefferson, I would have thought you were talking about you know Transylvania or something. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> Transylvania by I the mean, by the Carpathian Mountains or something. But like this story, it kind of alludes that. There might have been again, you know. They're really. They could have just been like really close, close friends. But it kind of alluded, and they had a really deep relationship. And yeah, and it was either because of their fighting. That's what the ghost walk and stuff that I've gone on down there kind of kind of sells it. But on the other hand, it could be this like maybe unrequited I, sort I, of thing. You know. Yeah, I was. I'd be willing to bet, and that if we were to research this, then we would go to historians or something or whatever. That these these guys are probably in love. Probably so. Well, I mean, to be it, that passionate over something it, like that. Exactly, because I I can tell you this. I I love my wife like as much as I can love somebody. Mm-hmm. But we have had some knockdown. Like I've fought harder or argued harder with my wife than I have anybody else on this yeah. planet. Yeah. Uh, I mean, without a shadow of a doubt. And I, I, Robert, you know, you know my history and, right. and what we've gone through. Right. Um, but I've argued harder with my wife mm-hmm. than, than I have with anybody else. And to me, this story, it sounds like these two guys yeah. were, were in love. Yeah. I mean, they were lovers and. Man, I mean, we don't we don't know if they were lovers. No, we don't. I'm just saying it just it sounds Either it way, sounds like it could it. be. They could have best been like. I mean, I believe in total deep platonic love on that level. I, I do. I, I I had a friend, Jeff. Um, my my second daughter is named in in honor of him. Um, her name's not Jeff. Her name's Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> but my daughter, Jeff. Yeah. Your name. <laughs> but um, he was my best friend. I mean, and and I I say this all the time. He was he was my soulmate yeah, as a friend. I believe that completely. He that, he was my yeah, friend that's soulmate. Possible. And I mean my, my wife was my soulmate to live my 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 life with and to, to right. be my partner in life. But before my wife, Jeff was my friend's soulmate. I mean he yeah. he was I mean and when he died, there's there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about him. Yeah, I named my daughter in memory of. I, he he always said that if he had a daughter, he'd name her Zoe. Well, my wife was pregnant uh, with Zoe um, at the time. We already had another name picked out for. Her. Yeah, but as soon as I found out that he died and my wife was is pregnant at this time, I was like, it's there's there, there's no doubt. Uh, I mean, her name's Zoe now. You know, it's just it's just the way it's going to be. And and of course, my wife was on board with it. I mean, it, there was no question. And, and what's crazy is um, when I was in the military, when I was in the Army, uh, I talked with, uh, with an African prince. Um, he was about to become king of his, uh, of, of his tribe, of his people in, in Africa. He came to, 
to America to serve in the military to get education so he can be, be a better king. And I'm talking to him and and I'm sharing him this story of my friend uh, uh, that died. And, and forgive me, I, I don't know what part of Africa. I don't remember. I just know that he was a prince. He's going to become a king. But um, hey, so which part of Africa? I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> so um, but I was sharing this story with him about how much I loved my friend. And, and I named my daughter in memory of him. And he said in his in, in his people, in his tribe, that if you name your child or name somebody after somebody, they take on the traits of this individual. Wow. And it's crazy. Because Zoe is so much like Jeff. She, she's so much like him in so many ways. Her, her personality, her attitude, um, her sassiness. It, she's, she's like him in so many ways. And I thought that was really cool that, you know, I, I'm, I'm talking to this African, African prince. And, and in his, his, his people, they believe that if you name somebody in remembrance. So <laughs> he told me, he said... <laughs> He said that if 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 you don't like somebody and you didn't want the kid, the kid came and you didn't want him, you named him after people you don't like. <laughs> so that's, so <laughs> that's me. I was like, man, that is cruel. It is. And he said that if you if you plan on having the baby and the baby comes, then you name him after somebody that you like. I was like, wow, that's that's crazy to me. So. That's they don't. Like they don't. You're productive if it's your kid and you have to raise it, and then you gotta have this asshole you don't like living <laughs> in your house. That's what I was like. They, they, exactly, but that's just that's just what they did. I was like, okay, hey well. man, I I I I've always wanted to get married. I've always wanted to have kids, but if I do have kids, I am not naming them Craig. <laughs> <laughs> not doing it. They would have yeah. horrible taste in shirts. So, but but it, but also in their in their tribe, they they weren't raised like we're raised here. You know, they yeah. they they took the ones that they liked and they they raised them different ways than the ones that they didn't like, which is crazy. But that's just that's cultural. That's how they do it. Yeah. Well, I think sometimes um, that happens here too. Yeah, I, 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 man. I, I know I know several of my friends growing up. They were not the favorites, and then I know some that were the favorites. So. But I just thought it was interesting um, that uh, that I mean, and I know we kind of veered off on a on a rabbit hole here, yeah. but we got on to the to the soulmates of, of me and him being soulmates. Right. Um, I, I truly believe that God put him on this planet to be my best friend for the time that I needed him. Right. And in this instance, it, it, it quite possibly could be that they're just just that great of yeah. friends. You know, they're just. You know they're inseparable as friends. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember reading that anywhere. Uh, yeah, I, that's the first I've ever that heard is, of that. That is just so weird with the iron and stuff and the chains yeah. and. Yeah, I, I mean, I was just trying to think of because a whole lot of those stories kind of melt together, and we did a lot of partying when I was down there. You know, but how, uh, how did you find this? Because uh, we went to the cemetery. You just walked the and cemetery, we knew, and we knew. Um, I can't remember names either, but. The person who at the time ran the Jefferson Ghost Walk and, you know, just just going down there and meeting people and talking and hanging out and whatever, just yeah. word of mouth. And we went to go check it out. And it's there. It's very, hey, another, it's about maybe three foot high. Right. It's not really, if you didn't know what it was, you didn't know what it was. It's like, wow, that's there it odd. is right there. That's odd. Just, just another reason to take Bigfoot Club on the route. Absolutely. I would love that. Like I said, that's so man. Beautiful. Just think, think of how much we're gonna cover when we go to Hallsville and Jefferson. Oh, yeah. Lord. Just, just, just in that little area alone. We, My whole we, early twenties. We have to, <laughs> we have to collect some PTM before we do that. Hey, we got, we got enough of it. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, uh, before we go any further, I wanted to make a shout out to um, Mike Cardenius. He runs. Uh, Midnight Paranormal Society. Um, it's a good dude. Uh, I know him from the Penn, Texas uh, Facebook group. And if you're in the greater San Antonio area and you need help to contact them, it's uh, paranormal uh, MPS at Gmail. And you can also go to their Facebook page at uh, Midnight Paranormal Society. And uh, Mike's a good dude. Um, 
he's got a he's got a great group, and they they've been doing a lot of a lot of probably a lot of um, investigations. I think they've been on the, even the local the local news there, and they've like displayed equipment and how they do it and stuff like that. Yeah. So he's he's a good dude, and uh, he reached out to me and. Uh, he wanted the he wanted to network with me, which I thought was kind of yeah. Cool. That's so, cool. Yeah, so that I is just, cool. I just want to do a shout out to him and his group. He's got some good people, and uh, they seem to care a lot about helping people. So push, we kind push, of want to push, push. So okay. So I I wanted to kind of kind of jump in, in into kind of a personal uh, experience if that if that's cool. That's cool. Um, we touched on there there being a baby. Uh, at this possibly being a baby oh obviously there was a baby but possibly the baby uh touching my aunt and all this stuff mm-hmm. and uh it it brought back some uh some some experiences that happened with my babies when my babies were babies mm-hmm. um we just we we had, we lived in Arlington for a while and we we just moved to Garland. My family's from Garland, so we were like, "Well, we we lived in Arlington with 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 Britt's family. Let's let's go uh, live by my family for a little while." So we moved to Arlington. I mean, we moved from Arlington to Garland, mm-hmm. and we found this little house. It's it's a little three bedroom house. Um, man, my my, my babies were babies. Um, I want to say, man, like uh, like two and 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 just under a year. Wow, that's they they were they were young, um, and uh, we'd moved in. And normally, when when I'm when I'm looking at a new place, I go in and I I do what what I call um, my feeler, um, and I do it everywhere I go. And and it's I go in there and I feel for anything negative. Uh, I, I I've shared several times that I, I if I open myself up. I believe that I could talk to the other side. I, I've just always have a, had a strong connection with with the other side, and so I'd go in and I do my feelers. And normally, if there's something going on, I can feel it. I didn't feel anything in this house. I didn't no, feel no, anything. No, no presence or nothing. No, no, nothing, nothing. Sorry. Not, not even in the the slightest. Not even anything. So I was like, cool. Let's. Let's do this. It was in our price range, so we, we moved in. Man, it was, I guess it was about six months into, and we signed a year, a year lease. It was about six months into to our year lease. Um, my oldest daughter, uh, Carly, and she's going to listen to this, and I think this might be the first time that she's she's ever heard this, so I'm, I'm going to have to to share it with her. Um, because we don't we don't really talk about it with her. Actually, I don't think we've ever talked about it with her. So does 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 she know about it at all? She knows that said that something happened, but she doesn't know the the details. Details, okay. Um, and and one because I don't want I don't want her to go back in her mind and 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 start recalling these details um, if they're gone. So I might not have her listen to this. I don't know. Um, that's just something I'll have to pray about. Okay, but um. About six months in, uh, she got a a imaginary friend, mm-hmm. and his name was Alex. How old was she? She was about two, around two, three. She she was talking, but she couldn't quite make sentences. But she she was talking enough to where we could we could understand what was going on. And I'll have to get with Britt because I'm horrible with ages and in times. Okay. She was walking. She was talking. And my my other daughter Zoe was I mean little bitty she wasn't walking or talking or anything, so she got a friend Alex and Alex lived behind her door in her bedroom. All right, I didn't think anything of it. I mean, kids they have imaginary friends all the time. Right. Well, Carly started having night terrors and she had never had them before, and they started happening. Right around the time that she she started talking about her friend Alex, so she came to us one time. We were eating dinner in 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 our in our kitchen, and she had mentioned. She said, "Alex don't like y'all," and I thought that was strange. You know, I'm like, "Wait a minute, 
I get having I get having imaginary friends, but your imaginary friends not liking us. I mean, this is getting a little, you know, creepy, creepy. You can see I got chills everywhere. Um, so I went to her room and I said, hey, look, Alex, you got to go. You, you got to get out of here. Bye bye. Mm. See you later. Well, a little while after that, Britt goes on a cruise with with uh, her mom and I'm there. Uh, at the house by myself and it's it's dark uh, i want to say it's I, I would i would put them down to sleep about eight thirty, so it was probably about eight o'clock because i was giving them a bath well i'd i'd finished uh giving zoe a bath and she's sitting to the side and she's sitting in her little jumper thing or bouncer thing whatever it was and i'm giving carly a bath and i'm scrubbing her down and she looks over my and 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 right before she does this i felt this presence behind me. I felt something behind me and she looks up and she waves, you know, just waves. Hi. And I turn around and there's a black mist that goes up under the, the door frame and down the hallway and down the hallway towards her room. Mm -hmm. Well, I got, I got her little naked butt up and we went to my sister's house for the night. Wow. I got out of there. All right. So, I came back, and when I came back, it was a couple days later. Um, she's having a night terror. Well, whenever she would have her night terrors, I would wake up, and I would go down the hall, and I would pick her up, and I would just bring her to our room and lay her in our bed, and I would let her finish her night terrors because you can't do anything about it. Right. You just got to let them. Yeah. You just got to yeah. let them go. Right. Well, this time, when I got up, I walked down the hallway, and she's standing in front of her hallway door. I mean, it's in front of her, her bedroom door. She's standing up. The door's shut. And you can hear her having night terrors, but it's not coming from her. It's inside the room? It's in the hallway. Oh, no, in the hallway. Yeah, you can hear it in the hallway. It sounded like it was in the hallway. But her mouth wasn't open, and it wasn't... I know what she, I know what she looked like, and I know what she did whenever she had night terrors because she'd been having them. Right. And I'd go pick her up, and and we would we would just keep her in our room. Her her mouth wasn't moving; she was just standing there still. Was she asleep? She, was her eyes were closed. Okay. And so I start saying Carly, Carly. Well, when I start saying Carly, you could tell that it started getting angry. Yeah. The, the the night terrors went from just sounding like her screaming to it sounding like very angry. More like more like a like a dog whenever it's warning you to stay away. Growling? It's it was like a growl, but it was more like a, it was more like a <clears throat> Oh I see. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't a <laughs> But it was like right before a dog starts to go, it starts going, you know, it's giving you that warning. Hey, don't, stay, yeah. don't do this. Well, I immediately start praying, uh -huh. immediately start praying after this. I'm walking down the hallway and it's, I mean, it's a pretty good, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty long hallway. I mean, it's not like real long, but it's, it's a lengthy hallway. Right. And so I start walking, you know, towards her and, uh, and as I'm walking towards her, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. She leans back on the door and she slides down with her feet out in front of her. So she's just sitting on the floor with her feet out in front of her and her head in between her legs. And at this point, I hear her say, Daddy. Mm -hmm. So I knew that it was her. So I went and picked her up and I took her to our room. The next day, I'm out of there. I leave. I break my lease, break pay lease. whatever I got to do. I'm gone. That was enough. I knew at that point... That this was this this something was was absolutely there, right? And it was evil. Of course, I've said before that it's all evil. Right. I believe it's all evil, unless I know for sure that that you know it's it's something sent from God. But I knew that this was this was severely evil, and it was trying to it was trying to possess my child. Um, and I think it was a mild a mild. Uh, 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 possession of, of my daughter it was attempting it, to it was possess. it was attempting to to possess um yeah we we got our stuff and we were we were out so when you left you didn't get any residual stuff and no she didn't nothing and, and no and more alex 
no more Alex. It was done. Okay. Um, of course. Um, do you have, do you have the address to this place? Mm-hmm. I, I know exactly where it's at. Is it is it an older house? It, it's not an older. I want to say it was like um, late sixties. The house was built. Okay. Um, maybe maybe even slab or fund or rich it's slab. Rich. Okay. Um, that's why I think maybe it's 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 maybe not being the sixties. It might be early seventies. I didn't do a lot of research. Because at that point, I didn't want anything to do with it. It sounds like a newer house. Mm-hmm. It, it, might, it might be a newer house. Um, um, but I, I want to say it was like late 60s, early 70s, somewhere around in there. But again, I didn't do a lot of research on it. I didn't mm. want anything to do with it. I was done. I was, I was out of there. Um, so you said she was two or three, and she was talking pretty good? Yeah, she... she, she Cause like, she's always been brilliant child. To say the word Alex, that's... That's yeah, to know that that this is Alex, and and I I even went as far to look at all the TV shows that she watched at the time, and thought that she might have been bringing Alex out of one of the TV shows that she was watching. Right. Just a, but there was no Alex in any of the TV shows that she watched. None of the characters were named Alex. Ashy guy? No, it's just it's something to think about because you know they do say that kids are a little bit more open mm-hmm. to things like that than we are. Yeah. I don't know. I can't, you know, you know I can't make a judgment because I wasn't there. I yeah. didn't see it, you know. Yeah. But I mean, I, I mean, I trust you. Mm-hmm. I mean, I yeah, trust you. If, I, mean, I mean, if if whenever, because you told me this even before whenever we worked together at, at USBC, that um, <laughs> that anything, anything that affects your babies, you, you're on it. Yeah. You're on yeah, it real that, quick. And so if if this thing was was you know bo- bothering stilts before she was stilts, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I I I I totally believe you when you say, okay, I'm gone. Yeah, and like you yeah. you said that stuff about Bigfoot stuff. Mm-hmm. If this if, it, if this thing's punching a hole in my house, I'm gone. I'm gone. So that that tells me solidifies that whatever you experienced, you saw it. You didn't want to be there. You left. Yeah. So I mean. The mist and her waving. Oh, man, I just, just, just <laughs> give me cheers right now. Trust me, man. So every uh, time I think about it. So do you, do you? Whenever you deal with somebody and they say my name's Alex, is it? Is yeah, that, does all that, the time. Does that bring you back? To I have, that? Absolutely. It is definitely a trigger uh, because when it was so personal, man. Yeah. I, I've I've been through tons, man. I saw a little girl at a table. I've I've, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen I've seen ghosts my whole life, man, and I've had events happen to me all the time. Radios coming on, stuff moving, uh, stuff missing from one place to the other, um, things that I thought that I'd lost, they just show up. I mean, just name it. I've been through it. So the me- to mess with your baby, to yeah. mess with my baby, and to and to do this to my child multiple times. Yeah. I should have I should have left when the mist. Yeah. I should have left then. Yeah. I should have. But I was under the impression that I can control this. Right. This is not I, I can do this, you know, because I've I've experienced it so much and I've had so much so much experience with paranormal that I'm thinking, oh, I can handle this. Man, I know I know whenever I've done paranormal stuff and and when whenever we get Kendall on uh, there's been, I mean, cause I, anybody that knows me, I mean, I've gone through some anxiety and depression in mm-hmm. the past and stuff like that. So anytime I was doing paranormal stuff and I felt that I was compromised, that I didn't, I didn't go to the investigation cause mm-hmm. I, cause I think when, whenever you do an investigation, whenever you deal with stuff like this, you, you just got to be mentally strong. Yeah. And, and if, and if you're not, you know, just go, just leave. Well, I that's, mean, that's the thing. At that point, I knew, I knew right then and there that this thing was way stronger than me. Yeah. That there was nothing that I was going to be able to do. I did what I knew to do. I prayed. I prayed and I went and got my daughter and we got out of there. But I knew, I knew from that, I knew then that I can't, I can't control this. Yeah. I can't do anything about this. The only thing that needs to happen to that place is it needs to be burnt down to the ground. You know, it needs to be, nobody needs to live there. 
Um, I'd like to go back just to see if, if somebody lives. I'd like to go to the local library. Yeah. Now, I would like to research it. Uh, I'm, 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 in a, I'm in a whole different place in my life and in my walk with, 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 with God that, that I have the protection that I need. You know, yeah. I, I'm not going to tempt it by any means, but I, I'm not going to open myself up to that. Yeah. And, and I'm not going to let it in. Well, you know, I'm glad I'm glad you number one, you got out. So that's that's the important thing. You got out, you got yeah. your family out and and, you know, you were in this situation and you, you probably, you know, you felt that you were way over your head. Absolutely. And, and you left. So, that's, yeah, that's good. So anytime, you know, anytime because um, like some people, I don't know, for the life of me, like that story we did the last show. They didn't want to leave that trailer because yeah. they were financially strapped. And some people, that's just how they are. Yeah. Like they don't want to leave. So, but if, if you were in that situation and you have that, you can always reach out to people like us and we'll find someone that could help you out. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah. So, <laughs> because at, at, right at, that, at that time in my life, I didn't have anybody to go to. Right. right. I didn't have anybody. I, I just, I was. I was on, you know, as far as paranormal goes, I didn't have anybody to sit down and explain to me what's going on and what's, you know, right. I didn't have anybody to talk to. So right. I just dealt with it, you know, and and I carried it with me for a long time. So I think it's good that you're telling the story. So maybe that who's ever listening to this, maybe he's come across them. Ab- absolutely. And they can reach out to us and they yeah. say, hey, we need some help. Uh, what do I go? I need a venue. I need an avenue. Something. So, and I will, I, I will, I will let you talk. I will let you share. Um, and and we we obviously have contacts that you can right. that you can network you can with network with and 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 do whatever you got to do. Just if you ever anybody listening, if you ever have an instance to where you feel compromised. To where you feel that this is taking over you or your child or your animal or yeah. whatever it is, get out, leave. Even if you have to go to a hotel and have to, whatever, don't or stay a, there. Or a tent or something. Yes, something. Do um, not stay there. We got about 19 minutes to mm-hmm. talk about wrestling. So you guys want to jump, jump subjects? Yeah. Okay. So we can we can jump. All right. Here I know go. I know you uh you want to jump. <laughs> you think you know me. On this day, I see clearly Shout out Miles Kennedy. <laughs> Edge was probably one of my favorite wrestlers of all 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 time if anybody knows me that I, they know I, I love edge and i when he retired i cried i really cried so um i enjoy him for other reasons <laughs> <laughs> he's he's married to uh, beth phoenix so she's a hottie in herself so well if she fucks up <laughs> look out <laughs> <laughs> so um i wanted to talk about the crown jewel stuff yeah so, um, I did watch it. I watched it on part of it Friday night, and then on Saturday morning I watched some of it. So, uh, before before you do that, yeah, can can I say something real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Um, the Rock, uh, Jorge Masvidal, and Nate Diaz fought for the BMF Championship in UFC. Uh huh. Um, did you watch that? I did, and Masvidal beat. The breaks off of Nate Diaz. Sorry to ruin it for people that didn't. Spoilers. He beat the breaks off of Nate yeah. Diaz. So, anyway, I thought it was cool that The Rock was there. And uh, he came out. And he's the one that presented the the BM- BMF stands for Bad Mother Freaker. Um, you can say fuck. I'll say it for you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, Bad Motherfucker. <laughs> that's the, that's the freaker, BMF belt. Bad Mother Freaker. And... Uh, <laughs> So I'm gonna, start, I'm gonna start using that. Yeah, <laughs> bad mother freaker. So I thought it was cool that the Rock was there because yeah. Rock is a bad mother freaker. Is he so. was was he promoting something? He was promoting a movie that he's doing about uh, uh, marketing. Got it. Yeah, it's definitely it's all about marketing. And that's when he always shows up to these things. I so mean, yeah, he he's, hu- he hustles hard, man, and can't can't discredit him. On he's that. yeah, he's he he and his uh, production company. 
um, are making a movie about um, one of the one of the founding fathers of of MMA. I can't think of his name right now. Horn, I think something Horn. Um, but that's why he was there. But him and Dana White are like really good friends. So, mm-hmm. and they've been friends for a long time. But I just thought it was cool that I like The Rock. I've always liked The Rock. Yeah. So, all right, Crown Jewel. So I just want shoot. I just want to talk really quick about. Um, <laughs> And we'll talk about the card here in a minute. But I just wanted to talk really, really quick about um, the the WWE roster uh, didn't make it back on time for Friday Night SmackDown. And so the the report on the Internet was they were having uh, plane issues, mal- malfunctions or something. Mechanical like issues. Yeah. Like, yeah. And so... The only person that made it back was Brock Lesnar. It was kind of odd. Mm, of course. <laughs> Brock made it back on time. Um, Paul oh, Heyman made it back. So, Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I just think it's like, you know what? Let him go. Yeah. The big one. The big, the one, big one. Let, let him do whatever he wants. And I feel like that's kind of how he gets along in life. <laughs> so, the big uh, mean one. Former WWE Spanish uh, commentator Hugo Sanovich. Uh, reported that that apparently uh, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia was uh, he owed Vince McMahon for for two events and he hasn't paid him. So uh, McMahon uh, st- decided to retaliate and cut the live feed for Saudi Arabia. And so this this drew the ire of the crown prince. And so according here it says uh, that. The Crown Prince was so irate by this decision that he had WWE superstars taking off the Atlas Air flight just before it was due to depart. <laughs> so there's rumor. There was rumors yesterday that this something else had something mechanical issues, but nothing concrete could be confirmed until now. So this Spanish commentator was, I guess, I guess he was there mm-hmm. doing the commentating, I guess, and so. so Never again. So. <laughs> And so I think Buddy Murphy, uh, Rusev, uh, I think someone else was tweeting about, you know, never again or hopefully don't make it home before my my birthday. So um, so who who did uh, SmackDown? Uh, it was uh, Daniel Bryant doesn't doesn't go to this thing. So Daniel Bryant was there. Brock showed up, but he only did like a, prom- a, a promotion. Uh, of course. And so. <laughs> and so so um, he, um, they, I, I think uh, Triple H was there, and Shawn Michaels, and they decided to um, to bring NXT up. So there was a lot of NXT people. Um, Matt Matt Riddle came up. Um, Shayna Baszler um, attacked um, Bailey. And she used to be UFC. Her. Yeah, she was UFC. She's the current uh, NXT. Wasn't she the Black Queen? Uh, what is her name? Ace. It was Ace. Like, yeah. Something. Something Ace. I, I can't remember. I can't remember. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. So she uh, she attacked Bailey and made her presence. And uh, Matt Riddle and some other guy. I can't think of this guy's name. He's a big dude. They attacked uh, Sami Zayn. Because Sami Zayn's not allowed to go to. Sami Zayn Bailey. shouldn't be allowed to go anywhere. <laughs> so. Um, so. So uh, I believe he's Palestine, and so I guess Saudi Arabia don't want Palestine people there. So um, Palestinian, Palestinian, yeah. So he's he's all of Palestine. Well, he's he's that's his background. I know, but he's Palestinian. He's not Palestine. Yeah, Palestinian. Palestinians okay. Okay. are from Palestine. Gotcha. <laughs> Even though there's not a state called Palestine, but I know. Okay. I'm just anyway. I'm, I'm just hacking so, on you, okay? <laughs> so uh, Matt Rado and this other guy attacked. Um, Zane and uh, it was pretty funny and then um, the main event was Daniel Bryant versus uh, Adam Cole and I thought it was a really good match but uh, it was it was pretty much a showcase and I think they were trying to cover it up because I guess they're doing Survivor Series next month and they decided to go um, Raw versus Smackdown versus NXT so I guess they announced this NXT was there and they would planned it all along of you know NXT coming up and surprising are me. they are they trying to to it sounds like they're trying to put NXT 
up with with Raw and SmackDown as far as being on the same level. Yeah, I mean it's I mean it's got a lot of popularity. It's got a lot. I mean it's they they sell a bunch of stuff. They sell a bunch of merchandise for them, and it, they they do well. I mean, but to me it's 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 minor league. To me mm-hmm. it is so. There's there's guys that have been on there for an l- awful long time and probably too long because I think they're afraid of you know coming up to the main roster and then not being used, not being utilized, which is a lot of a lot of talent like that anyway. So, well, I can I can remember um, my buddy Jeff that we talked about before. Um, I was on varsity. I played varsity baseball and. He could have been on varsity, but man, our catcher on varsity was outstanding. Mm-hmm. And there just wasn't a chance of Jeff starting or getting any kind of playing time on varsity because of how awesome our catcher was. So he said, Man, I'll decide to stay on JV and play every day, then come up to varsity and sit the bench. So that's what it made me think of when you're talking about these NXT guys. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd rather stay in NXT and wrestle every day than go up here and just be. Uh, a yeah, sh- but not dick. included. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel that man. That's how it was for me in sports. So, so I was watching the Crown Jewel, and um, the kickoff show was a uh, twenty man battle royale. The winner of this one was going to face AJ Styles for the for the US title, and it was uh, Humberto Carrillo. Yeah, he's he's a pretty good talent. I think he was on two hundred five. I've never watched him until he came up to the roster. He's actually pretty good. And, you know, he he beat, like, a bunch of guys that normally don't get, you know, like... Um, R-Truth. R-Truth. Um, your boy, what's his name from Impact? Uh, Eric Young. Oh, Eric Young. A bunch of guys like yeah. that. So, uh, just guys like that that just don't normally get a whole lot of time and stuff. So, he ends up he ends up winning that. So, he's going to have a, a, a match with AJ later on. Brock Lesnar defeated Cain Velasquez um, fairly quick. So I mean, they made they made a show of it, like made it seem like it was UFC. They were kicking each other, you know, yes. in the shins and stuff. So Kane mm. Kane goes out. They after- weren't bleeding. They weren't UFC. Yeah. 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 They didn't come out and talk on the microphones like, "Yeah, we had a good fight, uh, and we fought, and and this person won." We kicked. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we. We we kicked each other in the shin. So I mean, uh, I don't know where I am. I mean, it was entertaining. <laughs> it was entertaining because like they were going at each other, and um, Kane gets on top of uh, Brock, and Brock gets him in um, Kimura. Kimura, and he tapped out. It did, and then he picks him up and does an F five. You know, and then uh, I think to be honest with you, this is me. I think it was unscripted. I think uh, Ray comes in with a chair. And hit starts hitting Brock. He gives him like good eight shots. Well, the the first time he hits him and it doesn't phase Brock. Yeah, and and Brock goes at him, and then he goes back after Kane, and then when he goes back after Kane, that's when yeah. Mysterio starts really whacking the crap He's, out of he him. He starts hitting him in his elbow, his yeah. forearm, his head. He starts I mean, beating the crap out of him. That's stuff that you normally don't do with a chair. Yeah, normally. that you know we were talking about that. It's like there's a proper way to hit someone with a chair, and <laughs> any other way you're gonna. Fuck them up. Well, it, it could be because he's so small and that too. But at Brock Lesnar so time, big. But I get at it. At the same time, I it's still it. a fucking metal chair. Yeah. <laughs> he was beating the crap out of him. I mean, he was f- maybe old Brock told him to have hell. Who knows? Yeah, you know? yeah, motherfucker, I can take it. Yeah, he he was know. he was going to town. It was pretty funny to watch. Um, and then the they had they had that big. Uh, Tag team turmoil yeah. match. It was mm-hmm. that was actually pretty good, and uh, the OC won that. Yeah, I thought the New Day was going to pull it out. I, I thought they had to give OC, the OC yeah. a bone because like he's there with AJ, and mm-hmm. they they got to give him something. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was kind of sweet. And then they had Mansoor. He was the local talent there in Saudi Arabia. He beat he beat. Now I, I got a new name for Cesaro. I think he's like the ultimate jobber now. Yeah, he's, he's losing to everybody they're pushing. Mm-hmm. And so Cesaro's a great talent. Um, ah, man, I really like Cesaro. I do too. And he's he's a he's a dang good wrestler, man. He he is, and they they just don't. I don't know. I mean, if 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 I had to pick, you know, I, I like Kenny Omega. I like you know Seth. I like AJ. He would be up there if they would actually let him. They would actually push him because he's a really good talent. Maybe, maybe he's very athletic. Maybe he'll go to AEW. Anybody that could. 
pick up Big Show mm-hmm. and throw him over the top rope by himself. Yeah, it's it, it's a talent, but that's just me. <laughs> it is. I mean, he can literally do nothing else but just that. <laughs> God damn, take that off. He's the good. Road. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> he's good, and and he's got the the entertainment factor too. Yeah, he's good on the mic. He is. So he was funny when he was with um, Jack Swagger, mm-hmm. and uh, I can't think of the guy's name. Uh, the guy that was his mouthpiece. I can't remember his name. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you you know who I'm talking about? I know I know who you're talking about, but I can't. Um, oh, it'll come to me. Anyway, and then Tyson Fury defeated Braun Strowman. Yeah, I, that one. Come on, that one you could you know that one was like so. I mean, WWE scripted. Okay, it's always no. scripted. It's scripted. Don't tell me that. Yeah, you <laughs> just is, ruined my childhood. <laughs> What? But, but this that was this was a picture of script. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. it was like, oh man, it was bad. And <laughs> and then um to job. Yeah. To job to Tyson Fury. Yeah, because he, he come pu- on. He punches him, falls out of the ring, yeah. He goes to the ten count and gets out. Of course, you know, he gets pissed off, gets up, uh, slams yeah. him yeah, and you know, tells him, This is my house, you know, and but to to a count out yeah. to lose via count out garbage to Tyson Fury. Yeah. <sighs> to job. You, you're jobbing to Tyson Fury, man. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> and you lost via count out off a of one punch. And then you, then you come in and start wrecking shop. Come on. Yeah. Give me a break. And then uh, AJ defeated her uh, Humberto Humberto Guerrero and Car- or Carrillo Carrillo, and so it was that was a good match. That's probably the best match yeah. of the whole night. I was um, gonna say uh, you just you just you took the words that was the best match of the night right there. So, them two, and then they had Natty versus Lacey Evans. I don't know if you guys saw this. And he- yeah. here's the thing, man. <sighs> that the, because it's the first time, yeah, that women were allowed to wrestle over there. And they had to have Natty win the first match ever. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, only because she's a heart. Mo- yeah. Most people, I, I think that's kind of what they came along with. It's like they're great that it happened. Right. Absolutely. But, but they still got a long way to go. Yeah. You know. They do. Especially like with that access and, you know, the fact that they had wear leotards and big old big old shirts. shirts and stuff, you know, had to cover their yeah. arms completely. And yet the men character and their man panties, you know, yeah. it's bullshit. Yeah. You know, you know and, and what, what really kind of got to me after this was like Lace, Lacey's a really good athlete. I don't know if you guys have seen her match. She's a really good yeah. athlete. She's really, really good. Um, and she's a heel. And yeah. so after the match, she completely went off, went off, off script and just started hugging Natty, which is yeah. which is I understand it. It's great. It was a great moment, and I was happy for them. But I, I don't know. It just to me, it was. I I I just think it, it's absolutely a great moment. Absolutely yes. a great moment. But so, get get somebody better yeah. than Natty to win the they, first. They're match. probably the only one that agreed. To I do was going to say that it's probably a lot of them were not going to go because you know. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't care. You know. I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> but for her to be the first, she is not a good wrestler. She's not a good talent. No, she's not. She's just been there a while. She's been there a long time because she's a heart. Yeah, that's it. That's the only reason why she's there. She's she's Tyson kids. Tyson kids. Oh, um, I know. Um, wife. Yeah. Her husband. That's and right. I liked Tyson kid. Yeah, he was good. So she's not. <laughs> and then. Uh, <laughs> Team Hogan beats Team Flair. This was a TNA deal a while back. Yeah. So I'm not going to give them a lot of play on that. Yeah. So. And then uh, Bray Wyatt beats Seth Rollins. For that, was, that, that was surprising. Yeah. To me. It really was. Uh, I mean, we talked about how, how, um, how Bray Wyatt has, has revamped himself, and I like it. Yeah. I do. But, man. I, I think I like him better without the title. I do, too. So I don't I think he would do he would run better and he would his character would be better without the title. His his I don't know how to get it out of my head and and into words. I just think he would be better without the title without 
he he's not the target. He puts the target. Does that make sense? Yeah. He puts the target on people's backs. It, it does. Not not the target on his back. And and as the champ, you have the target on your back. That's his whole stitch. That's his whole thing. Is is I'm targeting you. I'm hunting you. You're my prey. You know? Yeah. Does that make any sense? It does. It does. That's the best way that I can I can I think if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna give it to him, you know, wait until WrestleMania or wait to after after WrestleMania because that's usually when you switch titles. You know, let let Seth have it until Man, WrestleMania. I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't think Seth was gonna lose it at WrestleMania. Yeah. I didn't I thought Seth was gonna have it for another year. Right. But we're at one. Fi- we're at two hours right now. Oh. Wow! All so. right, Dan. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't get a chance to talk about AEW, but it's okay. They yeah. they probably won another week anyway. So, but anywho, uh, we want to do any shout outs? Hey, shout out to to every. Hey, last time I checked, we were almost at three hundred. Yeah, three hundred downloads. Almost. I think we were at two ninety three. Um, our our pilot episode was was at ninety nine, one away from a hundred. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, um, yeah. it's exciting to hit three hundred. Yeah, that's it is. I, I mean, mean I, I you know we gotta we gotta get into some advertisement. We do. We so. we definitely have yeah. to. Uh, <laughs> we have to find somebody that is that is good at social media. I, I think this week I'm gonna reach out to that party I was talking about. Yeah, about doing a podcast over there. So. Yeah, I'm gonna reach out to him and and we're 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 gonna we're gonna get this show on the road, man. Yeah, that's At some that's, point. That's you know phase one. Yeah, so um, we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna try to get some guests in here. My mom listened to the the pilot. Oh, she did. What did it, what, what entirely, was, entirely. Oh so. yeah. What was her opinion? She says. She says, "Is that your roommate? <laughs> <laughs> Who is she? What does she do?" <laughs> She said that we sound alike. Yeah, she says she says Chris and I sound alike. She goes, "Who is this guy? Is this you?" I go, "No, it's it's my friend Chris." He sounds like you. I go, "No, he doesn't." But okay. But so I love, I love my mom, so I I, I put it on yeah. I put it on her phone. I put it on Google Play. So. Nice. so so she's got it now. So she's gonna be able to listen to it whenever she wants. So she's sweet. gonna probably have a lot of questions. Too sweet. <laughs> so why are you doing this again? No, she keeps no. A, she keeps asking me, "What is it called? A, a podcast? A podcast?" <laughs> okay, I guess a podcast, mom. That's awesome. So she's trying. That's at awesome. Least. No, she's she's awesome. And I think, have you taught her how to do DOS yet? <laughs> no. Teach her to- <laughs> no. Teach I have. him her how to do everything on the computer, Robert. I mean, it might come in handy. Yeah. <laughs> So this no. this show we were supposed to have Luke Gross, and I know I'm just not saying it, but um, Luke Luke uh, had to reschedule. So we're looking to have Luke and and possibly uh, another paranormal person to to do the show down the road. So mm-hmm. um, look forward to that. And um, any other shout outs to anybody else? Just we love you. Keep listening. Keep downloading. Yeah. Keep downloading. Lot more to come. I do look forward to like getting other people in here. Yeah, yeah. You know, tell their stories and stuff because you know, man, it, it'd be nice. Man, when yeah. Luke gets in here, I'm gonna have a lot of questions. For oh him. yeah, so he can tell a good story. Yeah, you know, he he's, Ho- hopefully he'll bring some persimmons. Persimmons. I think it, we're in a little out of, uh, out of date for that. You know? he, he might. So. I I can help you do some of that stuff. You know, I grew up. In the woods, nice. I lived under a tree or something like that. I don't know. I could find you some grub worms. <laughs> let's let's do it. Let's do it. Let's just go and survive in the woods for like just a weekend. So I, I think this is a good show. Yeah. yeah. So I am in agreement. I mean, I'm in agreement. Stupid. I'm. <laughs> I, I oh, vote, okay. I vote to call this one. Uh, you're lazy and a coward. Lazy cowards. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys think? I was thinking, I don't know, because last week it was nipples and penises, and then today it was no. kind of pretty, pretty heavy on the poop. And I was like, I was like anything, poop. it's like we just like just stick and no. fart jokes, man. Is what it comes down to. <laughs> it's our clickbait is just stick and fart jokes. Squatch is poop. Squatch is no. Sas- no, it's it's sas- sas- squat. 
La- lazy poop. <laughs> lazy, lazy poop coward. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like that. Lazy poop cowards. Okay, lazy so it is. La- lazy poop cowards. <laughs> Clickbait, but oh, what man. are they talking about? What? Lazy poop cowards. What <laughs> people are they afraid of the lazy poop <laughs> or are just the poop themselves? Oh, you uh, guys lazy and you, cowardice. You right? guys, <laughs> you guys are something else, man. Okay, all right, until next week. Uh, thanks everybody for listening, thanks for downloading. Please, please, please go to our Twitter page. Go to our Facebook page, mm-hmm. uh, Bigfoot One, right on Twitter at Bigfoot Club at, One at Bigfoot Club One, and go to our Facebook page and just you know give us some input, you know criticize us, yeah, jeer us, whatever. So anyway, thank you all for listening and downloading, and we'll catch you next week. Peace out. <laughs> Wah, 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 wah.